Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Christ child was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people, my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star that they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Amen. All I needed was three more science credits to complete the required coursework for the advanced nursing degree program that I had applied to in 1988. Three more. That was it. So I checked the OCC catalog and I found it. Astronomy 103. I always loved stargazing. In fact, one of my fondest memories is my mom and I cocooned in a hammock on the bank of the St. Lawrence River in August, gazing up to catch the Perseid meteor shower. Did you see that one? Woo, did you see that one? The sightings grew fewer and farther between as our lids grew heavy. I enrolled in the course. How, how hard could it be? After all, I could spot the Big Dipper like that. Well, like most things I get myself into, usually so far into, there's no turning back. The course was a bit more complex than spotting and naming celestial formations. Equations, calculations, formulas, yikes. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, oh my. Wavelengths, magnitude, radial velocity, synodic versus sidereal periods. And then there were the laws, the Stefan Boltzmann law, the Wien law. You know, I bet you didn't know, the dominant wavelength of radiation emitted by a black body is inversely proportionate to its temperature in Kelvins. And you're wondering, what's a Kelvin, right? <laughs> And then there's a Planck's law. The energy carried by a photon of light is inversely proportionate to the wavelength of that light. I can see your eyes blazing over that. Mine did too. When God created the heavens, it was no simple task. But somewhere in the semester, I was hooked. I think it happened when I was out at Vanderkamp one clear night counting the naked eye stars. That's right, that was one of the assignments. Counting the naked eye stars. How many do you think you can see on a clear night in the hemisphere that's visible to you? Don't tell me. Let's put that number up here, okay? Just think your number. I had to watch and wait for the right night when there was a new moon or, or close to it, because I didn't want the moon's light contaminating the visibility. 
and it had to be a clear night, which is no easy feat in central New York, and it had to be a night when Dick was not out of town so he could be home with the kids. Remember, this was 1988, the kids were young. Now, obviously, impractical to count every star on a certain night. Instead, it was much more convenient to count the stars in a few representative areas of the sky, and then, and then you multiply the number of stars counted by an appropriate factor. The project required a clipboard with a pencil tied to it so you could record, and a flashlight so I could see where I was going, and a paper towel roll. That's right. This was a tool used to gaze through to count the stars in the various area, representative areas. The equation included like the length of the tube and the diameter of the tube, and I know pi was in there somewhere, but who cares? This experience, I gotta tell you, I, I fell more in love with the night sky than ever before. And this, this flashback in my life came to mind when reading the lessons for Epiphany this Sunday. Sunday, the Epiphany being the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the wise men or the magi in Matthew. Epiphany directs our attention toward the stars. The lessons were perfect star-studded scriptures. The prophet Isaiah that Susie read, lift up your eyes round about and see, and then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and, be joy and rejoice. And the psalm, may he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound till the moon is no more. How beautiful is that? And of course, Matthew's gospel, we know that one by heart. The wise men set off to Bethlehem, guided by the eastern star, and there they found him. Baby Jesus, Son of God. A star brought them right to light from light, as we confess in our creed. Astrophysicist Carl Schreiber and his wife Iris, who happens to be a professor of pathology at Stanford University, have connected these dots in their book. It's entitled, Living with the Stars, How the Human Body is connected to life cycles of the Earth, the planets, and the stars. Quoting from the book, everything we are and everything in the universe and on Earth originates from stardust, and it continually floats through us even today. It directly connects us to the universe, rebuilding our bodies over and over again throughout our lifetimes. And this was a surprise even to the authors. We didn't realize how impermanent we are and that our bodies are made of remnants of stars and massive explosions in the galaxies. All of the material in our bodies originates with that residual stardust and it finds its way into the plants and from there into the nutrients that we need for everything we think and move and grow. And every few years, the bulk of our bodies are newly created. Newly created. For us Christians, not every few years, but every day. In faith, we celebrate a new year in our ministry together before it even begins. In a reflection of today's gospel, a writer spoke of Matthew's gospel highlighting the forging of a relationship between the God of Israel and the whole world. And yes, gifts were a part of it. In the beginning of the gospel, the wise visitors brought gifts to God's Son. And at the end of the gospel, Jesus commanded his disciples to gift his ministry to all nations. An ancient monk's prayer the year old, the, the old, excuse me, the old year is worn and tired. Time
time now to kiss it goodbye. <coughs> Take with you its wisdom, the authority and the power of all you have learned. Remember the past year with love, but let go of its despair. Live the year ahead with fresh energy and hope. Be strong. Have courage. It's time now for something new. A new year. A fresh calendar. I wonder what new star-leading ambitions might be drawing us. What gifts we will return, uh, we will receive in return by, by reaching out and sharing our, our talents and our time and treasures. Investing in ministries not yet even explored. Hopefully with a new spiritual leader to guide us. The sky's the limit after all. God's keeping his eye on us. So twinkle, twinkle, little stars. Amen.